Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So the Mavic 3 got a huge firmware update overnight as well as the RC Pro. In addition, we also got an update to the Fly app. Now we've all heard about the big January update. Now I think what they've done here is they've split it up. We did get a fairly significant update back in December, which brought most of the features to the Mavic 3. And now it's January and I think we're getting the other half of it. All the missing features have now been added and they've added some really good new improvements. And we're going to take a look at all that here in a minute. You can update the firmware over the air via the RC Pro. I would just recommend updating it first. If you're using the stock controller, just make sure you update the Fly app as you will need to update that separately. If you're using the RC Pro, the Fly app will get updated at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the release notes here to see what has been added. So you can see the aircraft firmware version has been brought to version 01.00.0500. And we'll take a look at the release notes here. And it says that it's added quick shots, it's added panorama mode, it's added burst shooting. And one really interesting thing here, it's added digital zoom for normal video mode and we'll take a look at that here in a second the next thing there it says it's added 4k 60 and manual ei adjustment for master shots it's added quick transfer it's added zoom and d log for focus track when recording video so that's kind of interesting and another really big one this is one of the complaints i had with the mavic 3 is it's added support to set the return to home altitude for advanced return to home so we'll take a look at that here they've changed the way that works a couple other things it's optimized accuracy for color correction increased image sharpness for the telecamera when shooting at high magnification so that's a nice new update optimized image area for time-lapse photo and then of course it gets into the RC updates there as well so I'm gonna power on the aircraft and we'll take a quick look at a few of these things now we can't take a look at them all here at the desk we'll have to go out and test them out which we will do at the end of this video so the first thing they've added here that we can take a look at is they've added zoom when in regular video mode now it is kind of limited you can only use two times max at the most you can see there when I press on it two times and then it goes back to one times and that doesn't matter whether you're in 4k if we switch down to 4k you can see there it's still only two times but for the most part that'll be enough just to zoom in and at that point when you're only zooming in two times you're not going to really lose that much quality of course you can always use the scroll wheel to move in just a little bit if you need to so definitely a nice new feature the next is they've added burst shooting you can see if we switch over to photo we can select burst and we can set it to shoot either three, five, or seven photos. Just like that there. Now another thing that they've added, which is going to be useful for many people if you film in a flat color profile in D-Log, they've added color display assist. So now when we go over to our camera settings, and if we turn on D-Log, you can see we now have this color display assist that we can enable. And what that's going to do is give you a more accurate color of what you're filming. Up until now when you were filming in D-Log it was a very flat profile and it was really kind of hard to see fine detail and to tell if everything was exposed correctly. So now it's going to give you kind of a representation of what the colors are going to look like and it'll allow you to set everything properly. So definitely a nice new feature. Now lastly before we head out and test out some of the other features uh, the other thing that they've changed is the safety, the return to home. With the Mavic 3, DJI introduced what they call advanced return to home. And uh, in theory, it's a really good idea. It's going to adjust the altitude as needed to preserve battery power. The only problem with it is that in some scenarios, it's not really a good idea. If you had your return to home altitude set at, say, 100 meters, it's going to ignore that and lower its altitude. And, you know, if you are flying around trees and other obstacles, you're relying on the obstacle avoidance to work. And perhaps you just don't want to do that. You'd prefer to use the old method. But now you can see here we have two options, advanced and straight line. So if you select straight line now, it's always going to come back to you at what you set as a return to home altitude the drone won't automatically lower its altitude when coming home so definitely a nice new feature so at this point i'm just going to head out quickly it's not the greatest weather out today uh, we've got some snow it's about negative 17 degrees so pretty cold out but we'll just go out quickly and we'll test out some of the new features and uh, just make sure everything's working correctly okay so we're just going to test out some of the new features of the update the mavic 3 firmware update and as you can see, it's snowing out, so we're just going to make this flight pretty quick. Uh, the first thing here is the two-time zoom that you can now have when in regular video mode. As you can see, I'm not in explorer mode, but I'm still able to zoom in two times. And you can use the button there on the screen, or you can use the scroll wheel and uh, just scroll in like that. So two times isn't terribly much, but just enough to punch in if you need. And uh, you're still going to have a decent quality. And it doesn't matter whether you're in 4K, 5K, or 1080. Two times is the max you can zoom when not in the uh, explorer mode so definitely a nice new feature 
Now the next option is uh, the flat color profile D-Log. Let's check that out quickly. So we're going to put it in D-Log. And normally if you go back you can see how the screen you can barely see anything. It's uh, really washed out and it's really hard to set your exposure and some other settings. But now what we can do is turn on that color display assist as you can see there. So when we go back we kind of get a general representation of what it's going to look like. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely a welcome bonus. But I am going to turn that off for now for the rest of this video. So what else are we wanting to check out here? Just let me check my notes. One of the things that they've added is sharpness when in explorer mode using the telly. So let's uh, switch over there to the uh, explorer mode. It's kind of blurry off in the distance there because of the snow, but uh, let's go ahead and we'll check it out anyways. There's two times. There's four times. There's seven times. 14 times and there's the 28 times and uh, yeah it's hard to say but uh, apparently that is going to give you clear footage. So the other thing that they've added here is the ability to zoom and shoot in D-Log when, uh, when using focus track I should say. Now we do have to put it down to 4K it still doesn't support the uh, 5K so let's uh, select the bridge so we've got that selected and uh, we should be able to go up and yep, we can switch it over to D-Log. And yet we can still select it, so that's good. That works. Let's go back to normal. Select the bridge. So let's go ahead. We'll just um, use Spotlight here. And I'm going to use the zoom wheel. And yes, as you can see, we can zoom in. So yeah, definitely a nice new feature. Okay, so let's deselect that. They've added panorama, so let's go and check it out. Do a sphere, we can do 180 degrees, wide angle and vertical. Let's do a wide angle. Let's do a quick test of it. Holy, it doesn't uh, waste any time. Wow, that was quick. So there it's stitching the photo together. So we'll take a look at it once it's done. And I must apologize, the beginning of this video, the audio probably was pretty noisy because I did have the heater running in the car, but I've turned it off now. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that panel. There it is there. And beautiful. I'm actually a little bit envious of uh, all the people testing out the Mavic 3 firmware who live in uh, Florida right now because it's pretty cold here today. Uh, let's uh, try a vertical. And there we go. So yeah, works great. So yeah, that all works good. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll check out quick shots here. Um, we're going to set our distance to, let's just do 45 meters for testing purposes. Let's do a droney. Do a droney of the bridge and we'll hit Three, start. Two, one. You can't see it is moving there. It's not going to look too dramatic because I was already pretty far away from it, but uh, it is working. Now it's coming back. And there we go, it's back now. So as you can see there, we can do a droney, rocket, circle, helix, and boomerang. Uh, let's try helix. A box around the subject and we Three, will hit start. Two, one. It's just positioning itself there. And uh, looks like it'll start here in a minute. There it goes. So yeah, I'm just going to stop that because we just wanted to see if they work and apparently they do. So that's good. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to test out. 
But now what I want to do is I'm just going to go put it back into regular video mode. And um, I'm going to shoot at 4K60. And uh, hit record. And I'm just going to do some flying around and uh, we'll test out the flight performance. I'm not sure what other bugs they've fixed. I haven't really uh, had too many problems with it as of recently. The horizon there looks pretty level. It's hard to tell. But I think uh, for the most part, that's the only uh, complaint I really had with it. I was still getting a little bit of horizon tilt, but uh, looks not too bad there. Let's fly up the river here a little bit. I just dropped Wifey off just past uh, that little factory thing there. There's a dog park, so she's out uh, letting the dog have a play while I'm testing the firmware. Maybe uh, fly down and see if we can find her. There's the dog park down there. Let's uh, use our explorer mode. I'm going to stop recording there. Let's switch over to explorer mode. Start recording and uh, let's see if we can find my doggy. Yeah, everything's blurry, it's hard to tell. Everybody looks the same. Oh, I think that's wifey right there. Yeah, she's holding a coffee, so that's good old wifey. And that's our dog, and she's playing with... Uh, Another dog, having a great old time in the snow, perfect. Okay, so let's head back here, I'm going to stop recording there, and I'll turn explorer mode off, and then uh, we'll go back into recording. So I'll put it into sport mode here. Kind of wish a train would come along right now. That'd make for some nice footage going through the snow, but probably my luck will not uh, allow for that. You can just kind of see the downtown, downtown London, right there in the distance, some of the buildings, but hard to see with all the snow. Yeah, so far so good. Pretty pleased with that update. It's going to make a lot of people happy. It's basically a full feature drone now. All the features are there. And uh, some extra ones that uh, we weren't really expecting. So yeah, I'm going to be flying this thing over the coming weeks just to test it out. And uh, of course I'm going to have a long term review of the Mavic 3 coming up in a little bit after flying it for a few months. So definitely if you are interested in this drone, make sure you stay tuned for that. I'll kind of give you my opinion on it now that we have all the firmware there. Well folks, that's basically it. That's the new firmware update for the Mavic 3, the January update. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.